allowed sufficient time to examine and confirm a nominee. We can debunk this myth in about 30 seconds. As of today, there are 43 days until November 3rd and 104 days until the end of this Congress. The late iconic Justice John Paul Stevens was confirmed by the Senate 19 days after this body formally received his nominations. 19 days from start to finish. Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, another iconic jurist, was confirmed 33 days after her nomination. For the late Justice Ginsburg herself, it was just 42 days. Justice Stevens' entire confirmation process could have been played out twice, twice, between now and November 3rd, with time to spare. And Justice Ginsburg herself could have been confirmed twice between now and the end of the year with time to spare. The Senate has more than sufficient time to process a nomination. History and precedent make that perfectly clear. Others want to claim this situation is exactly analogous to Justice Scalia's passing in 2016. And so we should not proceed until January. This is also completely false. Here's what I said on the Senate floor the very first session, the day after Justice Scalia passed, quote, the Senate has not filled a vacancy arising in an election year when there was a divided government since 1888, almost 130 years ago. Here's what I said the next day when I spoke to the press for the first time on the subject. You have to go back to 1888 when Grover Cleveland was president to find the last time a vacancy created in a presidential election year was approved by Senate of a different party. As of then, only six prior times in American history had a Supreme Court vacancy arisen in a presidential election year, and the president sent a nomination that year to the Senate of the opposite party. The majority of those times, the outcome was exactly what happened in 2016, no confirmation. The historically normal outcome when you have divided government. President Obama was asking Senate Republicans for an unusual favor that had last been granted nearly 130 years before then but voters had explicitly elected our majority to check and balance the end of his presidency. So we stuck with the basic norm. Oh, and by the way, in so doing, our majority did precisely what Democrats had indicated they would do themselves. In 1992, Democrats controlled the Senate, opposite President Bush 41. Then Senator Joe Biden chaired the Judiciary Committee unprompted, unprompted. He publicly declared that his committee might refuse to cooperate if a vacancy arose and the Republican president tried to fill it. In 2007, Democrats controlled the Senate opposite President Bush 43. And with more than a year and a half left, a year and a half left in President Bush 43's term, the current Democratic leader declared that, quote, except in extraordinary circumstances, end quote, the opposite party Senate should boycott any further confirmations to the Supreme Court. That's the current Democratic leader a year and a half before the end of the Bush administration. So in 2016, Senate Republicans did not only maintain the historical norm, we also ran the Biden-Schumer playbook. When voters have not chosen divided government, when the American people have elected a Senate majority to work closely with the sitting president, the historical record is even more overwhelmingly in favor of confirmation. Eight times in our nation's history, new vacancies have arisen and presidents have made nominations 
all during the election year. Seven of the eight were confirmed. And the sole exception, Justice, Justice Abe Fortas, was a bizarre situation, including obvious personal corruption that extended into financial dealings. Apart from that one strange exception, no Senate has failed to confirm a nominee in the circumstances that face us right now. Aside from that one strange exception, no Senate has failed to confirm a nominee in the circumstances that face us right now. The historical precedent is overwhelmingly and it runs in one direction. If our Democratic colleagues want to claim they are outraged, they can only be outraged at the plain facts of American history. There was clear precedent behind the predictable outcome that came out of 2016. And there's even more overwhelming precedent behind the fact that this Senate will vote on this nomination this year. The American people reelected our majority in 2016. They strengthened it further in 2018 because we pledged to work with President Trump on the most critical issues facing our country. The federal judiciary was right at the top of the list. Ironically, it was the Democratic leader who went out of his way to declare the midterm 2018 elections a referendum on the Senate's handling of the Supreme Court. My friend, the occupant of the chair, was running that year. The Democratic leader went out of his way to declare the 2018 midterms a referendum on the Senate's handling of the Supreme Court. In his final speech before Justice Kavanaugh was confirmed, he yelled, literally yelled, over and over at the American people to go vote. He told Americans, go elect senators based on how they'd approach their advice and consent duties over these weeks. Unfortunately for him, many Americans did just that. After watching the Democrats' tactics, voters grew, out, grew our majority and retired four, four of our former colleagues who'd gone along with their party's behavior. We gained two seats, they lost four. That was the issue. Perhaps more than any other single issue, the American people strengthened this Senate majority to keep confirming this president's impressive judicial nominees who respect our Constitution and understand the proper role of a judge. In 2014, the voters elected our majority because we pledged to check and balance a second lame duck president. Two years later, we kept our word. In 2018, the voters grew that majority on our pledge to continue working with President Trump, most especially on his outstanding judicial appointments. We're going to keep our word once again. We're going to vote on this nomination on this floor.